You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, what have you been up to today, folks? Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldox, and with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Hello, hello. Hi there. Hi. Let's not forget Kyle, the coach, Duggan. I feel like from now on, that's what I'm going to do because I have to wait so long to be introduced <laughs> that I feel like I shouldn't be on yet. It's a you grand know? reveal. Yeah, yeah. There has to just... be some kind of like, ain't Kyle, the coach, Duggan. Okay, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just sitting here like. Otherwise, you're just, <laughs> oh, just standing on the stage going, like a ham. are they going to say my name? A real ham sandwich <laughs> over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, folks, lots to talk about today. Obviously, it's been a bye week, so you wouldn't think there would be much to talk about, but God bless but it, there is. J.C. Jackson sucks, so we got a lot to talk about. So hard! Big suckage uh, from Mr. Jackson, but uh, there's other things to talk about as well. Uh, things going on around the league. We've got news from our upcoming opponents. We've got a Bolt Insight lined up. Special one. And even on a bye week, we still have a hefty amount of Ask Bolt Fam questions. So let's waste no time. Let's start off here at the top. Uh, Chiefs, Get saved Chiefs again. keep finding ways to like bribe refs <laughs> and just what? like perform some kind of trickery. Dude, the fact that that referee looked at that player and said, put your helmet on. You can't on. do that. That's no, 15 no, no, no. yards. No, no, no. I don't want to give you 15 <laughs> yards. back on. Don't make all me do it. Done. <laughs> You're all done. Put the helmet on. And, but, but you remember last year in the playoffs, Joey Bosa literally had a referee run over to him to talk crap to then proceed and throw a flag on. Like he was yeah. looking yeah. to throw a flag. Yeah. This was, hey, dude, put your helmet on. Hurry. Cameras do it, are do it, on. Do it, do it. Yeah. We have a we have a we have a little bit of a dead. I don't want to throw here. this flag, but on. I will if yeah. you don't put your helmet back on. God, I hate it's it. Like you got how does that feel as a fan? Like you know you're just getting bailed out left and right. Every opportunity that the, the NFL and the referees are gonna bail you out. Yeah. It, I don't know. It just feels very yucky. I think is the word yucky. Looking for. Ew. Yeah. Yucky. Ew. You can't be yeah. thrilled with that performance that you barely won. And Bef you got and then the saved week at before the end. that. The week before that, Patrick Mahomes gets outperformed by the Jets quarterback. I don't even need to name him because who knows who he <laughs> is. It's like yeah. you're just you're not you're not that good. <laughs> Come on, take a take a beat. I yeah. feel like you're not that good. <laughs> yeah. but I don't want to say that. And open up some weird Pandora's box where they get really good again. Some portal but, uh, to greatness you've just unlocked and opened. Yeah, it's just like, golly, it's not even, it's so blatant. Yeah. It, it's pretty wild to see. Uh, and it is what it is at this point. So, yeah, it is. Hopefully, it is. we're we going to get a couple of those. When we play them twice a year, you're going to get the calls. You got to beat them in spite of it. You got to beat yeah. them by 20. Absolutely. Just what it is. Double 100%. Um, yeah, and we we saw the uh, the Broncos go down <laughs> hilariously to the Jets. So that was bad. like a that was a Benny Hill sketch, just fumbling <laughs> the ball <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> just running around trying to pick up the ball, and then we just finished Monday Night Football. Raiders eked out a win against God. <laughs> Jordan Love. You just needed Jordan to make Love. like three passes and not throw three interceptions, and you beat the Raiders. Yeah, because it's that hard. Well, I don't. Yeah, the, and then his receivers are dropping balls, and they don't want him. The Raiders are going for it on fourth down and not getting it, and Every, yeah, everything's <laughs> prime time football has sucked lately. Yeah. Just so bad. That's fine. Sunday Chargers night, are coming in. Night. Yeah, <laughs> guess who's coming? Turn it in. around. <laughs> Got to bring that reliever in. Get me the <laughs> reliever. Good football on. Um. All right, and then yes, J.C. Jackson. Just when we thought that the trade itself, a real dish, was the end of it, we were just like, okay, we offloaded the contract. Good. It's not been performing. We'll have to talk about it. Everything's again. copacetic. Yeah, we're all happy here, right? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> not even a little bit. Just add um, some gasoline to the fire. <laughs> for like everyone that was like, Staley, you're such an idiot. How dare you let go of him? Where are you at now? Yeah, especially after he this needed shit. no way he's gone, dude. Or else the guys would have started fighting that guy in the oh, 100%. Dude, 100%. Yeah, the, the news that came out, for those that haven't heard, uh, this is from NFL.com, Ian Rappaport and Tom Belisaro putting out that uh, before the Chargers traded their one time free agent prize to New England, where Jackson began his career, there was one last straw. Sources say Jackson repeatedly refused to go into the game against the Raiders on October 1st, standing on the sideline with his shoes untied, even when a teammate was banged up and needed to come off the field. What a fucking toddler. Unbelievable. You got paid to go play in that game, and you just not feeling it? Yeah. No. How you dare got, you? You got paid millions of dollars, and you sucked, so you got benched. Right. Then they're like, okay, we'll give you another shot. You're active. And then you have a little temper tantrum. Right now, right. My, one year old, my one-year-old does it. Like I'm, <laughs> he, He'll lay on the ground. He has this pose that he goes to. One arm down, one arm up. And that's where I see J.C. <laughs> Jackson on the sideline looking at looking at Coach Daly like, uh. <laughs> that's what J.C. Jackson did. He just did a Teddy Duggan temper tantrum. <laughs> Oh, that was the thing, like crap. Such the whole. I mean, Kyle texted us, and he was just like, "Anybody see J.C. Jackson out there?" Like during that game, and we're like, "No, we don't see him out there." It turns out he was pitching a tantrum on the sideline, and Mike Davis was hurt. Like we could have lost yeah. him for the year. Your brother in arms tra- was hurt, and you said Mm-mm. we didn't have anyone else to put no. in. There was no one else healthy on the roster to put in at corner, and he was just like, "No, I'm not going." I'm gonna. He's gonna Good take luck, a Mike. roster spot, active roster spot. Yeah, just to screw the team over and collect case the game like check. Happen. And yeah. be a douche. I'm yeah. I'm filing a grievance with the NFLPA after that, and I'm getting that <laughs> money back. And yeah, I'm donating it to charity somewhere. Where, somewhere somehow. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we got to hope, see. Enjoy the Patriots getting. Smashed thirty one zero. We got to see him go he, to the Patriots. Oh, that was delicious. As soon as he got there, they sucked even harder. Yeah. Than Bill before. Belichick's biggest loss in the history of his coaching. So a goose egg. Enjoy it, JC. Hundred percent fatty goose. So piece of crap. Yeah, left the feet. Left the uh, everything seemed to be like really copacetic. Like okay, clearly this isn't a fit for you here. We'll send you back to New England. We'll offload some of that contract, but. Now, just all of this extra dirty laundry getting aired out, and understandably so, because it was he was painting the coaching staff to be like the bad guys. Well, and that's what's crazy. I don't know what to. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what more I could do. I'm I'm studying film and I'm going to practice. (laughs) How about not sucking, JC? That's what you could do. Well, he just had such a fragile little ego that like one inactive game really just made him go like oh. (laughs) like (laughs) that's what he did well i never like his monocle popped out of his eye god it's just i do like how the coach like we give shit to these coaches all the times but they were keeping it on the dl it is not a right they were trying to keep everything cool and and it's just people that were mad at staley for letting him go or cutting him or whatever it's so clear why it happened and we're just going to move on yeah. And Jerry Tillery, like we cut him last year yeah. for a and very specific like, oh. reason. It's like he's a cancer. Like these yeah. guys suck as people. You got to be it humble. Sucks that we didn't, we didn't notice it beforehand. But right, you, when, once you figure it out, you get rid of them. Yeah, yeah got to cut it. Yeah, J.C. Jackson's stat uh, on cornerback separation prevented through week four uh, down the, to the left. The worst <laughs> in the league by. By a An wide margin, incredible margin. Yeah, he's just down like, there on. You remember Revis his Island? Own little yeah, island. so good. <laughs> Jackson JC Island has a sh- shit island. He's just all by himself in That's the bottom left corner of this craft. It yeah. was it was funny because I was looking at his social media before I ceremoniously unfollowed him. He had, he'd wiped everything oh, Charger on it. <laughs> but I know what you think you should do. You should wipe your name because you're not getting any interceptions. You should yeah. not be Mister Ian. You're a fraud. He is you're not it. Yeah. <laughs> fraud. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm wiping him from my. Yeah, from no, I forgot, all, to I forgot all about that. No, it was I a great feeling. Unfollow. Yeah. Is, well, while good. while we are unfollowing JC Jackson, finally the news came out on Jerry Tillery's fine against uh, Justin Herbert. I've been I was refreshing like multiple days because it felt like why haven't they come out with this fine yet? Yeah, like, yeah. 
it, everybody else's fines were coming out, but not Jerry Tillery's for some reason. Uh, but it finally came out that the NFL only fined Tillery $10,927, uh, which some people might say, hey, that's a lot of money. It is to me, but uh, much I'm, less yeah. than many players getting fined for seemingly more minor infractions. Uh, today, the NFL announced eight different fines for week four that were bigger than Tillery's fine, and yet none of those players got ejected. Kind of weird. Kind of well, strange. Even like the one, I think it was somebody, uh, who was it on the Bills? So like, grabbed yeah, two beers did, from the stadium. Stephon Diggs. Crushed him. It was like twice as yeah. much as the hit on on Justin. It was, he, Stephon Diggs took, he went, he scored a touchdown. And he did the Stone Cold. The fans, took two beers and smashed him. Stone yeah. Cold he got, thir- yeah. he got a $13,000 fine. Yeah, that's more Jerry than Tillery trying to murder a quarterback. Late, blatantly late hit on your team. Like in the moment, I get the referees. If they like didn't kick him out, they maybe they didn't think about the whole backstory. You're the NFL. You know all the details. Yeah. You know this guy was a charger and he got it was a first round pick that got cut. And now he has an opportunity to lay out their franchise quarterback and he does it. That's a gigantic fine. That's yeah. not a little slap on the wrist, ten thousand dollar fine. Yeah. That should have been twenty plus K. And like make a statement like you can't you can't do that yeah so baffling that uh that that's the what's the fine wait amount. what's the fine if that's patrick mahomes one million dollars <laughs> yeah suspended yeah. from the league probably yeah you're you're in def- <laughs> yeah you're indefinitely yeah. suspended yeah. yeah so it's just it's baffling to see but whatever i mean it it's just weird do? Um, well, looking at our opponents, normally we wait until our Friday episode to talk about the upcoming opponents. But there's no game to talk about. We didn't but there's have no one. game to talk about. There's yeah. no nothing to look back on. So looking at the Cowboys, uh, apparently there was, a, there was a plethora of injuries that came out after their previous game. I didn't see the game, so I didn't catch yeah, any, you know, all the injuries or all the bad play. Uh, but at Cowboys uh, head coach Mike McCarthy said uh, linebacker Leighton Vanderesh. Uh, could end up on IR with the neck injury he suffered on Sunday night versus the 49ers. You sent us this video, Kyle. It did not look good. It's really scary. Yeah, that was full head down straight into a player coming out. And and the Parsons. Mm. Yeah, that was a scary scary hit. Hope he's okay. Yeah, hope he's okay. But uh, that's a huge player to to big loss to to linebacker score. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they're already down their starting safety that Trayvon Diggs that was having a huge year right, before he got hurt. He's right. on IR as well. Right. And then even more uh bad injury news, Cowboys special teams, a CJ Goodwin tore his pectoral muscle and is out for the season per source. So Ow. rough, you know, obviously we never want to see players get injured. Um, no. but you have to talk about it because these are going to be the upcoming opponents on the Monday right. night game for the Chargers. So, like I said, normally we wait till Friday, but like this is all kind of breaking news that you've got players now that are going to be ending up on IR or have season ending injuries. Feels like there's a lot of injuries this year, like more so. There's than a lot. Normal. And I, I mean, mean, maybe not, but it feels like a lot. It feels like, I mean, at least the Chargers aren't like, yeah, knocked on wood just now. <laughs> yeah, reigning champion, you know, yeah. ho- hoisting the trophy for most injured players. But yeah, there's a lot of players definitely getting injured around the league right now. You hate to see it. And this is the depth. Thing. This is Coach this Daly's is drafts comes for the last play, three years 100%. and how well those drafts have gone. I really like all those. That's where you build your team. I think that's we're going to see real quick as this goes. There's going to be more. Yeah. Uh, knock on wood. But it just let's let's keep it going. <laughs> it just feels like it's shifting in the right direction with coming off of our bite, presumably getting back Austin Eckler, Derwin James, Joey Bosa. Now having a cornerback room that's less drama filled, and I know what my position. Like you have Jaw in the star, you have you right. know who your outside corners are. Things are starting to get a little bit like Thule being a beast, and now you have Khalil, Joey, and Thule. Um, Kenneth Murray playing incredible, like way better than we've ever seen him play. Yeah. Nick Neiman <sighs> stepping up in the absent absence of Kendrick. It just feels like the defense is going to get something going here. I agree. 100%. This is definitely going to be the week to keep an eye on Twitter because of all the names that we talked about coming back. I mean, really, the one big name I'm really curious to get some late breaking news on is Jalen Guyton on what his situation is. When he's going to be activated. When he's going to be activated, uh, if ever, at this point, because we don't know what his situation is. You also have a four-week, like a three- or four-week practice window, right? You can open the window where they're allowed to be activated anytime within the that period and we haven't even activated that yet he's not even practicing mm-hmm. so i just hope that here come wednesday when we go out to practice that he's been that window has been started at least yeah you know yeah. 
That's what I would like to hear. And uh, what we would like to hear is you coming over to our Patreon. Ah, Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. Uh, check out all the funny videos and educational videos we've got over there. Like I said, Kyle, the coach Duggan is now giving coaches corner over the lessons over there. So definitely go check out uh, patreon.com slash charger chat. And if you don't want to go over there, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers. You can chat it up with other charger chat tiers in the member section and ask questions and ask Bolt fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high? Then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? A good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash charger chat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Now back to the show. All right, folks, time for our next segment. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh it's spooky season, spooky folks. Season. Uh, <laughs> so we're bringing over our friend from our fellow Charger podcast, Mr. Jake Hefner. Hefner. A half dog. As soon as that clock starts, your ass is mine. When I met Justin Herbert, man, that dude is big as hell. Yeah, the goal is to just keep it rolling. Come in hype because we have a lot of things to be excited about. All right, guys, we're back with another Bolt Insight, and we got a special one today. We've got the man himself, Mr. Hefner, and we've got the Wool Dog. I, I was very surprised to be invited to this. I didn't know if uh, that would be a thing or not. But This I'm, is the first time it's ever happened. We've never had Adam on a Bolt Insight, so this is a big deal. But it's you'll understand why, because we got something rad coming at the end. But Jake's here with us. We're so happy to have you, man. How's everything been going on uh, over at your pod, man? It's been good, man. You're just trucking the season like the rest of us, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, I keep telling Dan every Sunday, I have now had a cardiologist home service come <laughs> for the end of the Chargers games. Thought we weren't going to have to have one for the Raiders game for a little while. Then, nope, had to call him at the last minute. So yesterday was actually a nice, just relaxing Sunday. Yeah, just, it was nice. It was that I sat there, enjoyed my lunch. Didn't have to worry about a damn thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's, we're in the heat of it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't ready for the bye week I wanted more football. I wanted to like, I'm just not, it feels too early. And I was just kind of like bummed out. Like, I want my team. I want to watch my team play. <laughs> so, but we're, we're in it. Um, but that's a great thing to kick off. Like up to this point, uh, besides the heart, um, heart attack inducing moments, what have your general thoughts been um, about where we are right now at two and two? 
I mean, this is probably the best thing that you could hope for after the way that the season started at 0-2. You know, the Miami Dolphins game, you lose that one by two points. It was actually a hard-fought battle that the offense was just, it was a shootout type of game. And you kind of figured that that was going to be the case between Justin Herbert and Tua. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but to see how good Miami's doing right now, you're like, okay, well, so you dropped the game against one of the best teams in the league. Got it. The Titans game is one that really yeah. shouldn't have gotten away from you. We'll that, one that, just, that one hurts. That's one that you would really love to have back. A lot of... Um, a lot of mistakes on both sides of the ball in that game. It was just, it was just messy. And so the Chargers fall to 0-2, and then you realize, okay, well, you can't afford to go 0-3. It's a do-or-die game against Minnesota. <sighs> Thank God for Kenneth Murray and the defense for Seriously. saving the char- Chargers season in that circumstance. And then one more time, Asante Samuel Jr. in the Raiders game comes up because Justin Herbert gets a busted finger. The offense can't really do anything in the second half. The Raiders start to slowly creep back into it, but you end up holding them off. So sitting at two and two with the bye week, probably at the best possible time for the Chargers, considering all the injuries that they had. This was good. You basically get two weeks to prepare for Dallas coming up next Monday. Kellen Moore, I'm sure, has been taking a bunch of notes of what's what's been happening. Yes. So it's good because you got these next two weeks for the Chargers. You got Dallas and you got Kansas City. These are crucial games for you. Um, you would hope that best case scenario, maybe you split those at one and one. Hell, but I'm all up for surprises. So let's go two and oh. <laughs> that's that's what I'm pulling for, man. You know, like I, it was interesting watching some of that game last night and kind of what San Francisco did to the Cowboys because everyone was so pumped about the Cowboys going into last night. And now it's like, oh, God, it's the old Cowboys. So it's got to be it's going to be an interesting because they're going to be coming off of that. We're kind of get, getting, you know, catching our rhythm, and hopefully we'll start doing something special here. Um, but you know, the craziest thing also that happened, you know, was the uh, the J.C. Jackson drama, and even more came out recently. So, like, the fact that we're two and zero and he's not starting, I kind of like it. Um, and then, what what are your what are your general thoughts on kind of like what what that whole situation meant for our team, and maybe did that hold us back at all? This was such an unusual situation because once we started getting the reports like, oh, you know, he's he's a healthy and active. And then the reports came out the following week that he's saying that he was confused by it, didn't understand it. And then you hear Staley's part of it to say, you know, this is uh, gradually, hopefully we're going to get get back to that. Then reports him saying that he's not 100% healthy, that he's still coming back up for that injury. And then you remember you heard Staley was like on Thursday or Friday before the Raiders game. Somebody asked him about J.C. Jackson. He said he's going to be active. And then the reports come out yesterday that he essentially refused to take the field even when Michael Davis got injured. Um, I had given a lot of praise and admiration to J.C. Jackson in the offseason given how hard he had worked to get back off of an injury that is not easy to come back from. That was maybe one of the lowest things that any football player could do to their teammate. Screw what you want to say about the coach. Sure. As far as that relationship goes between JC Jackson and Brandon Staley, that obviously had a lot of underlying things. But just from player to player, from guys who collectively are in that locker room to say, we battle for each other, we do this. That was a little bit of a low blow. And so does it, does it set us back? I'm not sure if it necessarily sets us back, but I think moving forward, you have to probably understand that corner is now going to be a huge priority for the Chargers to try to rebuild that secondary unit. Yeah, it was definitely shocking. And it's kind of interesting how Coach really kept everything under the rug. Like, if, if, if I were Coach, I would have come out in a press conference like, he took, off, he took off his shoes. Took off his shoes. What do you want me to do? He's gone. Get him out of here. He's not tying his shoelaces. Putting him in timeout. No dessert. Get out of here. So I, I don't know. It was no I, juice box for you today, sir. <laughs> exactly. And it's it's funny because the speculation about everything that Staley's doing and what he's doing wrong. I still like Staley. I'm not giving up on him yet, but he is handling it. He's keeping it in house. And then all this shit is coming out after the fact and all the craziness that he wasn't. By all accounts, it sounds like he was kind of a liability and stressed. Did you get any of that, um, Adam? Any oh, a hundred percent. I mean that that was something that, like like Jake just said, like you're you're if you are so if your ego is so big that you are going to undo your shoes yeah. and fold your arms on the sideline and go like, no, nah, I'm not going to mm, play. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what every, every fan, I mean, you truly ostracize every charger fan, but every fan was rooting for this guy to be the comeback player of the year to come in and just become that Mr. Interception again. 
and you saw him come out and it's like, yeah, he's going to be ready. He's going to be ready to play. He's like, no problem with my knee. I'm coming in there and I'm going to, I'm going to wreck house. And he makes some mistakes in the first week and go like, okay, trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here because it's your first game back after having that season ending injury. And then week two happens and you don't hear his name very much, which usually is a good thing that like, okay, like he must be making plays because they're not talking about him. And then week three, he's a healthy scratch. And you're like, oh, what is happening here? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, like, like he just said, like he's going to be active that game. And you go, okay. And you're watching the game going. And he, even Kyle texted us. He was just like, anybody see JC Jackson? Out yeah. there? Where's like, JC? Is he supposed to be active today? And he just he doesn't take a snap. And then you find that he's been traded. And it's like, okay, well, something must have been going on there. And then to find out that he undoes his shoes and it's it's such a toddler move. It, honestly. Like, it, it really is just so disappointing that this team and the fans were rallying behind this guy to come back and be the guy that he needs to be, but just can't be humble enough to say, you know what? I'm not where I should be right now. Whether that's health, whether that's uh, football IQ, he's just not at the level that he needs to be to compete because he's either making mistakes or he's not keeping up with some of the guys that he needs to keep up with. So um, it's just disappointing all around. Glad that they were able to get him somewhere else. I mean, it's the Patriots. So it's like, I guess if anybody's going to take him, it would be the Patriots because they know what he's capable of. Yeah. And just to be able to offload the remainder of that contract, that's the biggest thing. Or at least the back half of it. As much as we possibly could, you know, at this point, because now that frees up the money to actually spend on players that are going to tie their shoes and are going to come out and play. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) it's, uh, it's just disappointing. But at the same time, you know, the games that he hasn't really been a factor in, we've been winning. So I think that's a good sign going forward that it's not, uh, well, the season's over because we lost J.C. Jackson. It's like he was never a contributing factor to begin with. Yeah. So even even a liability in that Miami game, he yeah, definitely exactly. did some boneheaded stuff. But yeah. so let's let's last question before we get to what we're all here for. And let's be honest, we're here for a very specific reason. <laughs> um, the last thing, this Cowboys game. Obviously, we got it coming up Monday night. What are your expectations? What do you hope uh, is going to happen? You know, when we take the field uh, Monday night. I, you know, I, one thing that has definitely stood out to me through the first four weeks of the season is that Kellen Moore can game plan and he can tailor his game plan to whoever the opponent is, as opposed to last year for the former individual that was holding the OC rank. It just seemed like the same wash, rinse, repeat vanilla type of offense. I just didn't get any sense of game plan, planning. So hopefully with a bye week, Brandon Staley, Kellen Moore, Derek Ansley can come up with a collective game plan on how they're going to attack this defense. Because really, I think that the the Chargers are going to be able to move on anybody. I'm just curious as to how they're going to do it. And now that the Dallas uh, has some banged up defensive players, hopefully that's something that you can take advantage of. And are you going to be able to limit these explosive plays? Because the stats have have been out there. And already people have been saying it, especially on the national media pundits. Rex Ryan this morning (laughs) said, hey, I know who Dallas is missing. They're missing that boy wonder kid over there in LA. I call him boy wonder because he looks like he's 16 years old. That's what he said this morning. So (laughs) there's obviously been a shift. I mean, Dallas was number one in red zone points or in the top in the last couple of years. They're not doing that well in the red zone. They're, they're scoring five points less than they were previous years. The Chargers are up five points from previous years. So it, it's been good when the Chargers have been able to get in the red zone. Um, we'll see what Justin Herbert looks like after this whole fractured finger thing. How are they going to be able to tailor that as they set around the offense and Justin Herbert and make that more manageable? Obviously, the Chargers should be getting a lot of names back. Austin Eckler, Derwin yeah. James, Alohi Gilman. Um, so hopefully those are going to be able to add some stability defensive wise and the explosive plays. Can you limit those? You did that a little bit in the Raiders game. You got on the better side of that. Um, Dallas has a much better offense, obviously than one that's led by Aiden O'Connell. So hopefully you're going to be able to still do that. I still think it's going to be a a close game, but hopefully the chargers have prepped enough. Hopefully Kellen Moore knows enough about that defense and what Dan Quinn is possibly going to bring at them that they'll be ready and they can get out with a, with a well-deserved W. Yeah, for sure. And J- Justin does some of his best work in prime time. So Justin Same Herbert baby. is different under the light. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do. And hopefully, you know, he's got that fill glove on left handed. Got to go fill glove. Got the sleeve. <laughs> I like the, the I like the sleeve, man. The sleeve that he started wearing. I mean? That just looked good on him. Yeah. 
pretty mean. I'm I'm all about it. Fashion statement for sure. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's do this. Uh, we had you on a couple months ago. It was just you and me. And then we had so much fun. Basically a horror movie edition of Bolt Insight where we're going to apply a horror movie to the AFC West quarterbacks this time. And we have Adam, Mr. Wooldog, who is a huge now. horror yes. fan. And he, he was kind of like, at last when we showed the last one, he's like, but I'm want to play <laughs> I, I like, mean I kind of play but it was after the fact I was like I, I need that I need that Hefner energy to <laughs> yeah. actually you know bring my A game yeah, so let's go I'm excited so, for this all right well let's kick it off um we'll start with Jake um we're gonna start with the first quarterback in the AFC West a movie that best represents this player Jimmy Garoppolo what do you got for Jimmy <sighs> it's fine I was not, I was not prepared for you to go with Jimmy Garoppolo because I had so much fun. I couldn't just limit it to Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had some for Josh McDaniels. I had some for the Raiders collectively. So I'll start with Jimmy. Okay, so I'll start okay. with Jimmy. So I I had two comparisons for him. So one could be split, not really a horror movie, but more of a thriller. You just don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo you're going to get. Maybe more tailored to that is Patrick Bateman from American Psycho mm-hmm. just with his schizophrenic yeah. mm-hmm. disorders. <laughs> Josh McDaniels to me is the stepfather because literally everywhere that that dude goes, he just ends up screwing things up. <laughs> <Kills> everyone, <laughs> so yeah, his Broncos coaching stint ruins that one. Bails on Indianapolis when he thinks he's going to get the job, and he just says no. The eleventh hour just pieces out. <laughs> Not doing much better in, in Las Vegas for them right now. So he's the stepfather. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I thought oh, the the Raiders just in general. I had them. You know, there's fifteen point five points a game. It's, at, it's toward the lowest of the league. That's some bad film. And another movie that has bad film in it, Sinister. Ooh. Man, I told you he's good at I this. I know. This is so much fun. I, I, I need to spend a couple hours <laughs> prepping for this because he always brings the fucking A game. Um, all right, Adam, you're up. All right. So Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. I the, the thing that strikes me about Jimmy Garoppolo is how good looking of a guy he is. Handsome. He's a very handsome very guy. Handsome. But he's a part of a team that has been struggling this season. Uh, and I think the the movie that I think of that's got a very pretty boy and uh, is struggling uh, to make any impact uh, at the movie theater is Dracula 2000. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what a pull. I can remember what? going to that movie. <laughs> I remember going to that movie thinking, man, what, what did oh I just my watch? God. The soundtrack. I enjoyed the soundtrack, yeah, but yeah. the movie itself. Uh, with uh, God, I can't. Re- I can't even remember who the actor was. Was it Townsend? I don't Townsend? remember. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, Pretty Boy, lackluster film. Oh, that Dracula was in two thousand. I love it. Um, all right, well, I'll go real quick. Mine was for Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm going to go with the classic Frailty because um, yeah. he's not only does he get hurt all the time, but he is going to eventually lead <laughs> us to where uh, you know the Raiders hide all the bodies. Um, oh. So that was my thought. Frailty, and he's just soft. He's probably going nice. to play half the season because he always gets hurt. <laughs> I like it. Um, so soft on uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, Russell Wilson, you're up, Jake. So again, I had a couple, I had some fun with this, and I, I kind of pulled yours a little bit, Kevin, when you were talking about the Austin Eckler comparison. And so I, Leprechaun definitely came into play because of the money bag and his $250 yeah. million that he ended up making. Like but then that. I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, maybe it's maybe I could spin this more into like a cash grab type of thing. So, you know, you see these franchises get revitalized and you're like, they literally just did it for this. So I thought of like Halloween 5 specifically because Halloween 4 was awesome. And they're just like, okay, let's just keep oh. making more of these. And it just tanked it. <laughs> or, yeah. like, you know, like... Jason takes Manhattan or, you know, that, uh, J- Jason true. five or Jason isn't even in, in the damn movie. It's just like, that. Hey, yeah. we got all these expectations. Everything's great. No, <laughs> shouldn't have done That's, that. I love it. Flew That's too awesome. close to the sun on wings of wax. <laughs> on <that one>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, That's good. All right. What do you got for Russell Wilson? So Russell Wilson, I, I think everybody was worried when he was coming to the AFC West, it was like, oh my God, Russell Wilson's now in the AFC West. How stacked is this AFC West quarterback room going to be? And then he comes out and has yet to impress in any way, shape, or form. And I remember you telling me, Kevin, that you just recently went to Halloween Horror Nights. And what was the most uh, lackluster uh, maze that you went through? It was Child's Play. Uh, Chucky. Yes, Chucky. Chucky is my comparison for Russell Wilson. He's there. Like, he's... 
he's been a force to reckon with, but lately he's just been kind of like into a joke. Really? I, I mean, it's Russell Wilson. What are we really running from here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kick him. <laughs> yeah. Just kick him. Yeah. He'll drop the ball kick and the baby. <laughs> um, I like that. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I love this segment. I had to start a whole new podcast just to horror movie references. Yes. Um. So for mine, Russell Wilson, I went with Ravenous Ooh, because yeah. it takes place up in Colorado, up in the you know it's cold. Oh, okay. And by the end of the season, the Broncos are all going to be eating each they're other. Eat each other. They're alive. just going to eat each other alive, <laughs> and there will be no one left. I love that. So I'm going with Ravenous. Nice. I love that movie. If you haven't seen Ravenous, I need to watch it again. Awesome. I remember loving that. movie. It's so crazy. So all right. Um. To this guy. I can't stand this guy. Uh, let's go with uh, Patrick Mahomes. What do you got, Jake? I mean, you have to give credit where credit is due. He is a guy who gives nightmares to opposing defenses, so you have to go with Freddy Krueger. Now, I was, I was thinking about this. I'm like, okay, what... To expand on it, like what Freddie is he? It's like, okay, so he's he's not racking up like the big time numbers so far that he did last year. So to me, that's like that's Dream Warrior status. Oh, yeah, yeah. At Nightmare, yeah, yeah Nightmare Three. So he's not, he's definitely not Freddie's dead, the final nightmare type status. I probably would maybe put him maybe like a, a cross between the original and Nightmare on Elm Street four, as far as like the hybrid goes with his kill count. Cause some of these some of these nightmare movies that you have, he's only killing one guy. And you're like, yeah, okay, well, he's right. not, he's not that bad. Yeah. So but to me, elite status is Nightmare 3. That's what he was last year. Uh, but he's still a force. And he still is just a guy who's going to keep opposing defense, defensive coordinators up at night trying to plan how to stop him. Still a force. Not quite the body count. That's right. Um, I like that. Hopefully we get a little <laughs> bit of that when we play him. Uh, what do you got for Patrick? So I had to think Old about Patty. this too because, yeah, it's, it's Patrick Mahomes. You have to respect the game. You have to respect what he's been able to do. Um, but there's just nothing endearing about him. So <laughs> every time he talks, I'm just, I'm wincing, I'm cringing. I'm like, I would rather go to this side of the room. So I, I put, I gave it to Jason because Jason is a force to be reckoned with, but there's nothing endearing about him. Like yes, yes, one of the goats, he's out there slashing people left and right. Uh, but at least Freddy Krueger, like has a bit of a charm to him. Yeah. Has like something about him that you're like, I like this guy. I don't like Patrick Mahomes. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Jason so, probably has a really annoying wife too. On yeah, I bet you if Jason talked, you'd be like, "Oh God!" <laughs> he actually spoke somewhere to be. Sounds like a yeah. frog. I, I talked for him. <laughs> <laughs> love so it. So there you go, Jason for Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Patrick Mahomes for me, um, just because he just won't, like he's always there. Um, is it follows? He just won't leave us alone. <laughs> he just is such a pain in the ass. And I didn't like that movie at all when I saw it for the first time. So it all kind of comes together perfectly for me. He's It Follows. I love that. Yeah. Overrated. <laughs> um, not quite what everyone says he is all the time. Um, and I know my our chief's buddy is in the house and probably heard me say that. We'll fight about that it's later. Fine. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay. So then let's go with the, with the man that we all know and love. Man, Justin Herbert. Legend. What you got, Jake? I, I think I actually kept the same answer that we had about this the last time. And it's it's still Jason Voorhees for me. I totally love the comparison that Wooldog just said in terms of the <laughs> unendearing, no personality. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> like, but just, just Justin Herbert, just take a look at this Raiders game as, as a pigeonhole of what he had to do with a pass rush that just kept getting through, kept coming at him, having to escape with his legs again, now playing injured again with his, with his fractured finger last year, it was the ribs. This yeah. is just a dude who gets incinerated in his yeah. movies and still just ends up, keeps coming at you. So mm -hmm. Justin Herbert is a damn machine. He's a mutant and <laughs> he'll figure out a way to do it one way or another. Even if he is the slowest pacing, walking person out there, he's going to get you. He's going to murder <laughs> you. I love it. What you got? All right. Um, whenever I see Justin Herbert take the field, uh, he plays like a man possessed. And I think The Exorcist is my comparison for Justin Herbert because The Exorcist is just one of the best movies of all of time. All time. Yeah. Like truly just one of the scariest movies ever. Uh, and when Justin Herbert's out there, he's just playing like a demon. He's playing like Beals above himself. <laughs> he's, just, he's on the move. <laughs> he's running. He's throwing the ball. He's making passes, making, and it's just, it's otherworldly. Some of the passes that he makes, like the idea that you watch some of these passes and you're just like, how, how 
How did oh, he do consistently that? Consistently doing. He's that. possessed. I'm sorry. He's That's a, what it is. So possessed. it's the exorcist. Producer. And we don't need an exorcist. Stay possessed. No. Keep it rolling. Keep this house unclean. <laughs> Keep this house unclean. <laughs> I love it. Um, it uh, okay, for me, for Justin, we have a lot of primetime games coming up. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with it comes at night. Because that's where uh, he will be doing some work under the bright lights. I like that. Yes. Uh, so yeah, danger at night. Anything vampire-y, just murdering uh-huh. at night. I think that's <laughs> yeah. Because we have like six primetime games coming up. So let's go. I know. I, that's, I'm excited for that. Like almost half the games coming up are going to be prime time, dude. I'm Come excited. on. Um, all right. Well, the last we have a bonus round. Okay, bonus round. We could pick any Charger player, and what horror movie are they? What you got, Jake? Final round. Okay, totally random. This is meant as a this is meant as a compliment and not an insult. But Jamari Sawyer, ooh, the Blob. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> the Blob. <laughs> and, I, and I say that more endearing than anything else That's because awesome. when, you, when you go to training camp and you saw him and Trey Pipkin standing next to one another, yes. the dude is just guard. Gantuan. Like that is a lot of beef on the right side of that line. <laughs> so he's going to continue to develop and he's going to swallow dudes up and he's going to take them out. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's great. I love it. <laughs> what you got, Adam? Um, I'm, I'm saying this one. And as I think of it, I'm like, I feel like we might've said this on the previous one. So if we did, I apologize. I'm double dipping, but I was struggling over here trying to think of like who else we could like throw into the mix here. And, it, it's got to be Joey Bosa as the cocaine bear. I mean, the yeah. guy comes out, he is ravenous. He is tearing <laughs> offensive lines apart. And now that he's got Thule sitting next to him, I'm excited to see Joey come back now and just to see what kind of production he can do uh, just playing like a cocaine bear. And I thought of a nickname for those two when they're together. Oh, uh, Thule bear. Oh, Thule uh, bear. Uh, <laughs> that's not my teddy bear. That's my Thule bear. <laughs> They, they look cute. But they're I love that. Tuli bear. Tuli bear. Tuli bear. Um, all right. <laughs> Mine was I kind of took some liberties because it's still fresh. He was a charger a week ago. Um, but I'm going to go with JC Jackson, the forgotten, because I already forgot about him. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Wow. So he's the forgotten. Go help, <laughs> go help the New England Patriots continue to lose and do what you do over there uh, with yeah, all how of about our money. That? Like, we didn't even talk about that. Him going to the Patriots and they got. Destroyed, destroyed. Yeah. Put up a goose egg yeah. against the Saints. So, so the forgotten. Yeah, uh, I actually never finished that movie. That was a movie. That was one of the few movies in my <laughs> life. Forgot about so it. Trash. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> but I actually remember walking out of it in the theater. That's how bad I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That's perfect. It's the perfect J.C. Jackson movie. <laughs> wow. Totally forgettable, and we don't finish it. Oh man. <laughs> That was a four-hour movie. We only got the first hour and five minutes. Um, and I paid twenty eight seventy five for this damn movie ticket. Son of a bitch. God. $38 uh, for popcorn. Could you give me half my money back, please? Yes. Please. <laughs> please. Um, all right, dude. Well, this was so much fun. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I wish it could be October every month of the year. Right? It would make me a happy man. Um, but yeah, well, we're going to have to just hang out outside of the podcast and watch movies like this. So, um, Absolutely. thank you so much, Jake. It was so awesome hanging out with you, man. And, uh, could keep up all the amazing stuff you guys are doing over there. And, uh, yeah, man, we look forward to hopefully one day we can go hang out in yes. person and do something rad. Yes, that would be awesome. Uh, same to you guys. Obviously, I always appreciate these type of conversations. Love, uh, love coming on your guys' show. And again, for conversations like this, like let's infuse more of it. It's just so much fun. 100%. It's the best. So, all right, man. Well, we appreciate you and we will, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Well, Mr. Hefner, thank you so much can for I coming say, on. Can I say, I just now realized what his shirt said. It said Motley Kruger. It did. Oh. That is the coolest <laughs> shirt. I, I need to find out where he got Jake, that. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I just I'm looking it. at the text. It's like, it's this big for me. So I'm like, I mean, attention, it looks to nice. detail, yes. attention, oh, attention to detail, boys. Attention to detail. I love that. That's so really much fun. Motley Kruger. <laughs> Motley Kruger. Okay, wait. Badass. As I sat back and listened to you guys all talk, I have a theory. Ooh. Okay. Lindsay, theory. you know, okay. So, wait, all of this comes out after we trade him, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Did Tommy T ninja the details and he ninja Bill Belichick? What if Bill oh. had known? <laughs> What if Bill knew that JC was being a prima donna, Man, not I don't know. up his shoes, and goes, okay, well, it is in contradiction to my previous theory that <laughs> hey, Bill got to play both sides. Thing. Right, yeah. right, right. And 
wait, this could still play into my old theory that <laughs> Bill was like, dude, just don't even lace up. Don't get hurt. We're coming back. <laughs> and he to took the him Patriots. literally. He's like, fine, I won't put on my shoelaces. Because like, I'm yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm just doing what you told me. We're <laughs> guards. <laughs> what if he had <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know those shoe laces for kids that are like scrunchied so you don't have to tie yeah, them? 100%. The twisty, twirly ones? <laughs> they, they hangs off the end and it's like twirly and so you don't have to actually tie them. <laughs> what if that's what chased you up? <laughs> they were twirly shoelaces. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, there's one no. standard I have now for all chargers moving forward. You got to know how to tie your shoes. Yeah, That's going to be like the draft. You know, they have it's like the, the new draft. Wonderlick <laughs> test. Yeah. <laughs> You ready? We have a stopwatch. Ready? Go. No. <laughs> okay. All right. You're good. Yeah. Are I'm you fast. an over, under, and through the hole type shoelace tire? Or are you like a are you double a bunny, bunny ears? ears? Yeah. yeah. What are we? Yeah. Juvenile. You're not going to be double able to pick not, up the playbook if you're a double not. bunny ear guy. Are those you know Crocs I mean? yeah. you're wearing right now? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know how to you tie, know how to tie shoes? Those, <laughs> is that fucking Velcro? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here! What You're not you, five. Get next here. <laughs> the next game, all the Chargers walk out with like boa shoes. You know, like the twisty <laughs> kinds. Hell yeah! <laughs> this is a big old. Uh. Oh, but I, dude, I love talking to horror movies. That's my second favorite oh, thing in the so whole fun. world. And God, that's just that was fun. Well, thanks, thanks for letting me play. And uh, it had inside. to happen. We were having too much fun. That was a lot of fun. Got to get Will Dog in on it. And Kyle, if you ever get into horror movies as much as we are, and you want to come join, we can we can do it. I will not Quad. because I will not. No. Uh, I will not. <laughs> I, me and me and my wife used to love watching horror movies. Ever since we had kids, she can't do it anymore. So that will oh. not be a hobby that we pick up. Gotcha. All with right. the, with kids, the scary stuff becomes too much of a reality, and a, other people getting hurt. So we don't mm. watch those anymore. So I guess you won't be able to watch any of my movies moving forward. Mm. Like. I'll watch yours individually. Hillary doesn't have to watch them. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Don't watch them on a phone, though. I'm trying to show, like, scope. This is a cinematic oh, I'm going to the movies. Okay. Oh, I'm we'll going to have a cinema. popcorn movie theater. <laughs> I'm a big movie theater guy. Okay, cool. So we'll we sure. were raised differently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Jake, again, thank You're you the so man. much for coming on. You are the man, buddy. Um, and it's now time to go on to the next segment. Ask Bolt Fam. Uh, let's see what kind of questions we got oh, in this bye week. Shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> 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 Time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh, hi, guys. Go jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we start off at the top with Zachary Shelton. Zach. Who asked the question? Hey, guys. I don't like to be negative, but I feel like this team got screwed in the J.C. Jackson ordeal. Ever since he came to the team, he's either played horribly and gotten benched or has been injured. So we trade him back to the New England Patriots, and I bet he's going to be the J.C. Jackson of old and will make us look like fools. And to only get back a sixth pick and a seventh round pick in 2025 is garbage. For how badly he messed this team up by coming here, we should have at least gotten a fourth round pick or even a third round pick because of his reputation. But this J.C. Jackson ordeal also kind of highlights why I think Telesco is not the best GM. He's been with the team for 10 years, and I think there are just as many or even more misses than hits for this team. Would love to know what you guys think. We're jumping cowabunga straight into this thing. Our first one, our first, our first ask bold fans usually like uh love you guys, love, love the you show. guys, everything you do is the best, my favorite podcast. <laughs> right now we're like, Geo sucks. <laughs> we gotta get out of this. JC no. Jackson. <laughs> this is tough. I hey it's a was bye week. <laughs> hey, would you say would you say all the other guys we picked up that year were swing and misses? Because we have Khalil Mack. Here's what so. I'll say. I feel like we hit on six round picks. We do <laughs> yeah, all so, day. That's a, yeah, actually so. what we wanted. Not good one through five, but six. We're but good. Six. All behind the scenes, boys. We wanted yeah. that 12 million dead cap hit so we could get another six round pick. <laughs> we got and, two six in that year in 2025. Now, <laughs> I it's unfortunate what happened. I don't think you could foresee him hurting himself like that. I don't think this is a GM thing whatsoever. Right. The potential was there. He was amazing before he came to us that's why he, he was there's a lot of people wanting his services right i don't think this has anything to do with with uh with tommy t could he have done more like you know research and found out about all of his legal <laughs> troubles maybe sure sure <laughs> who's gonna do that you want to get all nitpicky and shit <laughs> but 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, sure, I don't. <laughs> sure, he could have done research. Yeah. Research, me search. The guy yeah. had 20 picks in three He's years. He's Mr. INT. He could have checked to see how many people showed up at his birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. at least interview Mrs. Oh. INT and see what he's all about. Um, I but yeah, say, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I am not putting this on Telesco in the slightest. No. Yeah. I don't know, but I feel like it could have been a little bit more like, does this guy fit? It just doesn't feel like he fit this, what we're trying to do as a Chargers organization. Well, it's then that's Staley. Then that's Staley. I was going to say, as much as it yeah, is. yeah. Watch that video of yeah. him showing up and meeting Staley that first time. Staley's like rattling off all of he like, was excited all the shit. great things he did. It was just like, clearly this should all work out. I love that this coach is like ripcord though. He's like, this isn't working ripcord. Right. Let's get out of this. Let's move on. This is going to hurt the team and not help it. And we're here to win. Right. And that's what I love about that. And the year. trade was never about getting picks by any stretch and in oh, fact if it was no. we'd probably be on the hook for more of his contract yeah that was yeah, part no. of the the deciding or the negotiations as far as hey we'll give you jc jackson but you got to take at least 40 plus mil of his contract and like fine we'll do yeah that. like okay yeah. good so well, they got they got a discount player but i watching him play he was not very i watched i i am now watching a lot of patriots games guys <laughs> um i'm gonna go to the all all 22 i'm yeah. watching a lot of that secondary he was looking slow as shit. I didn't see him get fully burned, but he was out there and did not look very good. And right. that defense didn't look very good. No, so I he Guys, you know when the Chargers play the Patriots this year, I cannot wait. They oh, are going Keenan to Allen target his to ass. Just embarrass this man. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe it's Quentin. No coach okay. is gonna early want. prediction. This is gonna be Quentin Johnson's breakout game. He's gonna wait, be on wait, JC and he's gonna break him? out for. Rookie it's bears. not for a little while. I was gonna say, don't this say the breakout game it, is like week 14 or something. No, like he's gonna build, he's gonna build slowly. Okay, that'll be the game where he breaks out. I okay. think the coach is going to like Staley's gonna walk into Kellen's office and be like, I have something I need Throw you to it do. At <laughs> yes. Attack that bitch. I won't ask you to do this all the time, but for this once, I need please. you. Help me help you. Yes. We need yeah. to embarrass this man. <laughs> and that's what we will do. So, yeah. I, I don't think we need to completely lay it at the feet of Telesco. I get what you're saying there, Zachary. Yeah. But uh, For sure, there's blocks there. I think there. we yeah. still came out of this better than we could have asked for in trying to get rid of a guy that wasn't contributing to this team. Uh, it was just a total lemon. Just ended up it being a mistake. Like, yeah. It was a mistake. What was that buyback that? plan for cars? Lemon law. The lemon law. They, I wonder if we yeah, apply we that. To they this. need to put like that, that in. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think we should try a lemon. A lemon law. Yeah. At the end of the day, t- we drafted Justin Herbert. Tommy T drafted Justin Herbert. Right. So you can overlook a lot of stuff. Yeah. Although some say that he, he, he fell to us, but <laughs> he could have moved up and grabbed a guy God, that he wanted. So I, he could have drafted. Could have taken Jordan Love. Love. <laughs> He and, I, and I love that you, was honey. In the conversation, but he sucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Next All question, right. Zachary Shelton. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Friar Bolt, who asked the question. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Evil, Doctor Evil. Perhaps you've heard of me, or perhaps you haven't. It's been a while since I have returned for you to see. I have been frozen in space for over thirty years. I'm now back for global world domination, and now I plan on taking over the biggest American conglomerate in the world, the NFL. My plan is to first buy the Chargers franchise and move them from San Diego to L.A. to increase the value of the team and then resell them for one million (laughs) dollars. What is it, number two? What? The Chargers already moved to L.A.? Shit. And also, a million dollars isn't worth a lot? Double shit. (laughs) You know what? You people need to tell me this. I've been frozen for 30 years, okay? Throw me a freaking bone here. I'm the boss. I need the info. Fine. Change of plans. I will purchase the charges for cheap by blackmailing their owner with photos found on his private computer and then resell them for $100 billion. Now, why tell you my plans, you ask? Well, because I will sell them to an international billionaire where they will move the team to anywhere in the world. So if you wish to save your precious chargers and stop my plan, I will allow you to pay me off now for $1 billion. The question is, 
Now, will you show me the money or let me sell your precious chargers? You have my demands, gentlemen. Good day, sirs. One billion of my dollars? Because I don't think I have a billion dollars. And no, uh, My Venmo doesn't have that kind of change in it. So I, uh, if it's for my wallet, uh, Friar Bolt, no. <laughs> so is that, is, that the, is that the question? <laughs> Will we give him a billion dollars to keep the Chargers in One LA? billion dollars. Like us personally, the Charger Chat podcast? I mean, I guess we could start a fundraiser. <laughs> we could do a bake no sale. Let's, you got to buy into the question. If you had a billion dollars, would you use it? To keep oh, it if, I had, if I had a billion, I probably had two. And then if I have two, <laughs> I probably have enough to be okay. If you if give I a mouse a cookie, yeah, he's exactly. going to ask for a glass of milk. <laughs> um, yeah, if I had a billion dollars, I'd fork it over because then I'd be like the owner, yeah. I guess, at that well, point. Well, if you owned it, you could literally put it in Columbia, Missouri, and we could go to like walk to That'd the That'd be games. weird. <laughs> That'd be, that wouldn't work at all. <laughs> That'd be so weird. The Columbia, Missouri Chargers. There might be like fights. The Columbia the Chargers? Street. That's a good name. Columbia Chargers. I think it's a good name, yeah. but like with Kansas City being so close and like Perfect. Missouri being all Kansas City Chiefs fans, yeah. like. There, there there might be riots like could after be. every game. It could be. It could get real dangerous real quick. But uh yeah, Friar Bolt, I guess. I I mean if it was mine, if I had a billion dollars, yes, I would I would absolutely do it. Well, if you had a billion, probably had two, probably maybe three. And we'll go down that road. Money makes time. money, right? Money makes money. <laughs> Friar Bolt, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Tyler Foffey. Who asked the question? As I sit here and observe the 49ers give the Cowboys a good old-fashioned butt whooping, do we see the Chargers attempt to do the same, some of the same things the 49ers are doing, that being the Shanahan offense? Uh, can't wait to hear what you guys think. K, love you, bye. They really had a cheat code in that game, man. I don't know what happened, but hopefully Coach is taking notes. because. Well, for those that don't know, what, what is the Shanahan offense? For the for the new listeners that aren't familiar with that terminology, basically, I, I don't know if if everyone knew everyone would do it. Like you, it's just not something that everyone can do. They have an incredible running game. Yeah, they have a, yeah they have an incredible running game, and they have a tight. Every elite offense has an incredible tight end. That's just that's just fact. Name one elite offense that doesn't have an incredible tight end. Chargers. It's just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that's the only one because, like, that's just what it is. When you have yeah. Kittle, McCaffrey, Debo, like Ayuk, they're loaded everywhere. There's mm -hmm. not, there's no one single phase that you could take away. Like, let's take away Christian McCaffrey. Okay, good luck. You're screwed in the passing game. Yeah, it's like okay, let's sit back in a too high shell. Okay, Christian McCaffrey is gonna run all over you. I don't know. It's just like. It's easy to to narrow it down to the Shanahan offense, um, but if if that's all it was, people would just take his plays and implement them into their offense. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's I think it's just bigger than that. It's like a a mentality and a, uh, a I don't know. It's that's just the way that you coach, not necessarily just the plays that you coach. Mm -hmm. Totally. When it's like they don't really need a, if people are making comparisons to Brock Purdy and like. Pretty much put any quarterback in that position with how good that offensive line is and all the weapons around him, you're going to have some pretty good numbers. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, what's different Brock about Brock Purdy's no slouch. Like he's not no. bad. He's not he's bad. A, by he's any a Mr. Means. Irrelevant, but it, yeah. it, like the fact that a guy like that could succeed so well so quickly. But that's, that's what people said about Tom not. Brady, too. Like that's what Tom Brady was in, in New England. Like mm -hmm. he was drafted super late in the draft and no one really knew about him and he killed it. But is that his fault that he had a good coach? Yeah, I, it's just true. like he's a good quarterback. He is. I I feel like in ten years he pulls the Tom Brady card, goes to Tampa Bay, could win a Super Bowl with somebody else. Like wow. he's good. It's just I don't know. I I, I think it's just a all around like the 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 culture that they have there is like we will beat you, and they've bought in. I mean, when you look at Kittle and his interviews that he does on Part of My Take and stuff, it's like he loves being a 49er. He hmm. loves it. I think there's one quarterback that could go there and not do so well. Jordan Love. Hmm. Really blew it for us tonight, Jordan Love. <laughs> beat the Raiders. You don't come have to on. do very much. Just do and something. Beat the Raiders or we don't like you. It's like poking it with a stick. Like, come on, do, do something. something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go, Tyler Foffey. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Mr. Peck R, 
who asked the question. The buy week came at just the right time with so many buys. Bye to the injuries. Bye to the two and two season and the ugliness that came with those games. Bye to the Raiders because they have been eliminated from the playoffs and, well, simply because they're dumb. Uh, bye to J.C. Jackson, who showed shades of Eli Manning last week, now earning him the badge of baby back bitch. <laughs> and in the immortal words of Powers Booth and Tombstone, well, bye. And uh, most importantly, bye to the negativity. Be shamelessly positive. Take your bolt agra and bolt up hard. <laughs> of all the injured players that are slated to come back, who will have the greatest impact against the Cowboys on Monday night and how? BTFU, FTR, and Caleb, you bye. First of all, where do I get bolt agra? Because I'd like some of that. I'm not you sure. You're going to need a prescription. Oh, <laughs> hey, Doc. <laughs> Not covered by your insurance. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> that sounds like an only him thing where you can just call and get it ordered. Yeah. That's you not a prescription. <laughs> just got to head down to TJ. They got a whole box full of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just slinging it like Pez. <laughs> like Skittles. I'm, I'm bolted. Um, I think it's Austin. Austin's going to be a, the difference maker. Yeah. I think, I think that's what's going to happen in this game. I think I would love if Coach, the, you know, we, uh, McCarthy was like, we, I just want to run the damn ball, and I don't want to score so many points. If he just ran oh, the really? damn ball on them, <laughs> and we went like night. we went like twenty to seven or something. Yeah, just <laughs> ran the damn ball all over their <laughs> right ass. down their throats. So I think him coming back is going to be absolutely huge for our offense. Yeah, I can yeah, see that I mean, for sure. Yeah, I think when you look at the injury to Leighton Vander Esch too, like that linebacker running back matchup is so big all the time. Mm, yeah, and that's Ek one of Eckler's best assets is his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. So, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, Eckler and the one little snippet that we saw of him so far this season was pretty incredible. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see what Eck can do. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm a hundred percent excited for Eck. I'm also very excited for Joey Bosa to come back. I feel like having him because I, I didn't see the game. So you feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But seeing that uh, Dak Prescott had, what, it was like three sacks and like three interceptions or something yeah, like that. he was not good. Make him as uncomfortable as you possibly can. Use Tule Bear. Use Tule Bear. You got Mac Attack <laughs> on the other side. and I it, want Tule Bear to stick. <laughs> hard. I knew we need an artist rendition. If yeah. you're Come on, Brisket there, Broads. We need a Tule Bear sign. Give us sign. some Tule Bears. Yeah. Please and thank you. But I think that is an opportunity to make Dak Prescott extremely uncomfortable and if if that if those were the numbers that he was putting up against 49ers, I'm excited to see what he does with the with those edge rushers coming at him. So um Yeah, and it, it's also I think Derwin James, like as much as we talk uh, in the fan world of why are we play better when he's not there type of like idea, I wonder mm -hmm. if he comes out with a little chip on his shoulder to have a big game. It's very That'd possible. Yeah. I'd love for the defense. I don't think he's listening to our podcast, but no. I feel like the vibe is there. Like why do we have these defensive performances when you're not there type of deal? Yeah. But if he is, we're big fans. We love so you. Huge we love fans. you very much. You can't yeah. do anything. We've wrong. never said anything I bad about you. I, I don't yeah. necessarily believe that. Like storyline. Yeah. I don't know about this. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. he's talking about. I don't know what that never, I, we, we just heard it secondhand. Whoa. This isn't something we actually This believe. is secondhand. <laughs> this is us reporting. <laughs> yeah, we're news. reporting what we heard, not what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. He's no, we don't believe it. Yeah. I did have this feeling of like this thought of like, what if everything you said if all of charger fans if we only tweeted and like posted things that we were willing to say to these people's faces how Ooh. different the world would be like i remember when we the one player that we've Love all you. talked a lot of crap about who's the one charger player that trey pipkins you were like yeah if trey <laughs> came on the show and we had to tell him everything we've said about him you would feel pretty bad i would you'd be embarrassed Trey Pump Pumpkins, Pumpkins. Yeah, said Pumpkins, Poopkins. You've given him a few <laughs> different gotten, names. <laughs> I think it's a great way to live your life. Like if you're willing to say something crazy, mm -hmm. yeah. be willing to back it up. Because yeah, yeah. In hindsight, I might say that to his face, but probably would. not Probably not. When that giant go of a man is staring at you, not. you definitely would not. Not that big man. I take it back. It's gonna yeah. be juggling at you. Yeah, not breaking eye contact. <laughs> You're like, just me out. Would you say, say it again, Kevin? 
Yeah, I take it back. I take it all back. <laughs> all right. But I will say that to J.C. Jackson's face. Fuck. Oh, yeah. No, he's yeah, long yeah, you gone. You suck. Got him in the parking lot. I don't suck care. It. You're awful. <laughs> Mr. Peck. Shoelace is untied. That's <laughs> 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 Shoot, <this is> really <laughs> <good. sighs> let's move on now <laughs> to uh mark Bisnelli jr good one who asked the question <laughs> buffer in succotash i love playing monday night football and all to see justin sweet locks flowing in prime time is gonna be a sight to see my question is <laughs> how do you love lovely lads past the time until kickoff ftrk love you bye Spit all over my computer now. Because Wait, I that did down. Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle's a good answer for this because you're going to the game. So how do you? You're gonna yeah. build up. Oh right, that's gonna be. It's tough because I. I'm also taking my two sons, so it's gonna be me, Paxton, six. You got and your Franklin. Bring, who's you're bringing three. your posse, bringing the backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not as if we're gonna be just chilling in Thunder Alley the whole time. Mm. Um. So yeah, I don't. It's gonna be an anxious filled day of just waiting. Um, we're going to go, I think we're going to go up the night before, stay up in like Anaheim area. Oh, cool. Um, find something to do fun during the day, take my mind off the game <laughs> and then make our way over to SoFi before we run into rush hour traffic. And then it's time to bolt up with my boys. Oh, and it's going to be awesome. This, this feels like a, like a week one again, a little bit for me. Like we're starting over. Redemption I feel like we're like, story. Yeah, yeah. Like we're like got the bye week We're coming back. What team are we going to be? We're 500. We're 0 and 0. We're 0 and 0. We have, yeah. Yeah. So we're starting the season over right now. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a wash. It's a reset. With a yeah. one win over the Raiders. Yeah. We have. Of course yeah. It's like when your, happen. your computer starts not working great. It's slow and glitchy. You had a hard reset and everything's perfect. Everything will be fine. Yeah. We've, We've done, done it like, like three ran, times maybe. on this episode. <laughs> Yeah, we did try to start this episode three times. Hard reset. Yeah. That's what we learned. What do we learn? Yeah, we had to get a new stream Hard yard reset. going. It's just like <laughs> it was a unplug problem. and plug it back in. Yeah. Kevin took out that <laughs> took out the Xbox. Yeah, the Nintendo yeah. game. Give it a blow. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a blow. Mark Vasnelli Jr., thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Amber Dorman. Certified friend. Who asked the question? Hi, guys. Long time listener, but first time asking a question. Oh, you're welcome, Kevin. You guys really help brighten my spirits when things are tough and make the winds feel that much sweeter. My six-year-old had silly sock day at school today and requested to wear my Herbie socks. Hell She's yeah. very into Harry Potter right now. So for her, which Chargers players would be the main Harry Potter oh. characters? Let's do Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, Hagrid, and Snape. Tillery can be Peter Pettigrew because <laughs> f*** that guy. <laughs> Thanks for always making me laugh. BTFU. Ever yes. That is such a great choice for the Justin Herbert socks. Yes. It's silly sock day every Sunday on my feet. Let's go. Love it. Voldemort is JC Jackson, by the way. He's not on here. Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah. JC Jackson is Voldemort. (laughs) Or is Voldemort um, Mark Davis? Belichick, who sent in Peter Penn for one of his death. Maybe JC Jackson's a death eater. Ooh. Maybe JC Jackson is Snape and he's going back. Like, He's like a he's like double agent. And now he's going to go back and sabotage. He just loves loves Justin's mom so much. He's willing to do what it <laughs> takes. If you weren't watching the YouTube, please <laughs> my brain. I'm looking up, watch up Kyle, high for the answers. Like looking <laughs> The answers are up there. I'm, what if I'm bringing them down? <laughs> <laughs> but this that is was right so- this is right in our this pocket. Is, Harry this Potter is right and up our alley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right in the pocket. So let's kick it off. Harry, obviously we know who Harry is. That's Justin Herbert. Justin Come Herbert. On. He's the chosen yes, one. without saying. Yeah. Ron, best friend. Neighbors. Keenan Allen. Easton Stick. Best friend. Mm-hmm. No? You're not, you're, not, you're not impressed. Let's keep working no, on I, this. Let's, no, let's I'm workshop thinking this. it through. I do kind of like, like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I kind of like that. I feel like... Kellen Moore? Little gingery. Oh. He's isn't he a redhead, right? Isn't I uh, don't ask me that question. <laughs> I don't know. Not Matlock. If we're just going on, all right, let's just go ginger. Redhead. Give him Matlock. That, that yeah, yeah that's hundred yeah. percent Matlock. That's easy. Okay. Okay. Hermione, who is the smart voice of smart, reason, kind of annoying, 
but then gets hotter later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why did you have to? Throw I just that she gets stuff. really pretty. Austin Eckler. Austin yeah. Eckler is like an intellect. He kind of bugged okay. us this off season. Like, dude, yeah. shut sure. up. Just play. You're under contract. Yeah. Quit reminding us of all the stuff we forgot. You know. But yeah. then now he's like money. balling. Got it. He yeah. balled week one. You're like, yeah, I really love you still. Yeah. Type of kind of thing. We, we could do nothing yeah. without all your your amazing witchery. You know what I mean? We yeah. need you. Yeah. Dumbledore. Philip Rivers. I was going to say either <laughs> Philip Rivers or Dan Fouts, <laughs> one of the two. Philip Rivers I, is Dumbledore. Yeah. I, I I love that. I think Dan Fouts just because. No, 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 no. Oh, Dan no, Fouts, no, no, no. Listen, Dan Fouts makes appearances and he's like going to golf events. Dumbledore and Harry had like a kind of like, a, I'm not going to tell you everything. I'm not going to like come alongside you and like tell you, brought, you all of the. <laughs> you pulled me back pulled me in. Back in. Exactly. What a great yeah. answer. Hundred percent. It's like all the like secrets he had to crack. You got to do it on your own and become your own person. <laughs> you showed your work. That's like I'm what impressed. Phil is doing with Justin right now. He's you know? Dumbledore. Yeah. yeah. All all right. Right. Dumb- Dumbledore Rivers. Hagrid. Hagrid. Oh. oh, so sweet. That's like Sebastian today, or um, a big lovable oof that keeps him safe and protected. Corey Lindsley. Oh, it's their left tackle. Rashawn. Oh, let's, yeah. go, let's go, Rashawn. Yeah, it's gotta Rashawn. be Rashawn. Because he's kind of nice. He's got a heart soft. condition. Yeah. 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 He's got a heart condition. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay. Did we hit them all? I think we did. Snape. We didn't decide on Snape. We tossed JC, but I don't think it fits. He's a more of a Death Eater, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> he's more of Malfoy's dad. Kind of Snape thing. is yeah. like yeah. on yeah. your side, but he doesn't want to be on your side. He's just on your side because he has to. <sighs> like, what? who is somebody that loves this team so much? That is like willing to just like do terrible things for it. Yeah, like, that's how much he loves Harry's mom. That's yeah, that's true. That's Justin Herbert. Derwin James. Who's Joey this? Bosa? Khalil Mack? Oh, I don't know. Dirty thing. It could be a legend too. It doesn't have to be an active guy. I feel like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Dan Fouts. He's our Snape. Antonio Gates. He's too lovable. He's too sweet. Yeah, he's. I just authentic. don't get. I just don't get a potions vibe from him. You know what I mean? Uh, Dark arts. I yeah, this is a Slytherin it. we're talking about. Yeah, Chris, this is definitely Slytherin. Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Nick Hardwick. Nick Hardwick. <laughs> what about no, Matt Money so Smith? Cool. Matt Money Smith. Oh, oh, I think that's good. I think that's that is good. good. I like. Yeah, that. I think that's good. He's Snape, because yeah. He, yeah, he is. He is because he's, he's on like, your side. He but has to he be will... neutral. He's yeah. a broadcaster, so he has to try to stay a little bit. But neutral, he loves. But he calls the your crap out. Yeah, and he yes. loves the Chargers. And he loves the Chargers. Yes. Okay, they Snape. Okay. All right, that's perfect. Yeah, Matt Money. Yeah, he's Amber, that was too much fun. Thank you, Amber. Thank you good. so much for asking the question. Number we really goal. appreciate it. <laughs> Let's move it on now to Daryl Twenty One, who asked the question. Hey guys, oh, hope you're enjoying the bye week, uh, where there will be no gray hairs this weekend. Oh. Plus, my defibrillator isn't here yet. Oh, hoo-ha. Okay. <laughs> also, wanted to give Kevin massive kudos for coming on last week after a 13-hour drive home. Oh, damn! Okay. <laughs> now, for my question. When coming back from our buy, the meat of our season begins. As we anticipate the Monday nighter in front of the whole damn country, what are the two main things we're looking for, whether on offense or defense. Oh, Monday is coming, guys. Oh, get our hot meds and defibrillators out. It's time to show the Bolt fam in prime time. I'd say FTR right now, but who's kidding who? We're already fucked. Hoo ha! Okay, love you. Bye. I think you said we're when they said there. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we're not. These are fuck. cold reads, folks. I don't memorize this shit. <laughs> but I would have re- They're re- in script. trouble. They're apt. We are not apt. Not us. We're good. 100%. Uh, uh, uh. They are the ones who are apt. <laughs> <laughs> not us. Not us. Ooh, wow. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, you go off script. <laughs> fuck it. Do a lot. Fuck it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Right, back to the question. Back to the question at hand. <coughs> I mean, two things. I, go ahead. No, I think pass rush is going to be instrumental in this game. 
and getting Dak Prescott off his spot and get him moving because you saw what happened when the 49ers did that to, to him, and it was a tough day. Um, and he makes oh, mis- tough he, day. He makes he makes mistakes oh, oh. all the time. Oh. Um, so I think pass rush is the big one for me this week. You get a sack. <laughs> you get a sack. Let's continue to be the highest sack team in the league. Look, look, at minimum three sacks. <laughs> Speaking of which, I know you 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 reposted that video of uh, the Kelsey brothers talking about Khalil Mack getting six, six sacks. sacks. That was so. They're actually. I don't like Travis Kelsey at all. But Jason that's a, Kelsey's the man. The big bro- the rules, brother rules yeah. for sure. <laughs> He's the man. He, he was like. <laughs> He was like giving a play by play. If, if like, you were the guy giving up the yeah. sacks, he's like, after you one, you're like, one, okay, he yeah, got okay. me. All right. After two, you're like, okay, I need a little help here. After three, you're like, Coach, I'm what the hell are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> uh, he's really he's funny, man. I loved that. Um, yeah. I mean, can you think of anything else there, Kyle? Is different from what Kevin I, put I, out there? To me, the reason that this game was put on prime time is because Kellen Moore is our offensive coordinator. And the whole reason that he was let go in Dallas is because he wanted to score points. Right. So I think the storyline is us going deep down the field and taking shots and scoring a lot of points. I think that's going to be like what our foot on the gas, go score a lot of points. Um, and then in the nitty gritty type of it, the nitty gritty, nitty gritty, is, nitty. is third downs. Um, their third down offense has been really good this year. And our third down defense has been pretty good. We're, Given up thirty percent, I think we're third in the league in third down defense. So um, those third down plays, those are that's when that's when you make your money. So 100%. Uh, I think that's going to be a big tell of who wins the game. Yeah, looking forward to it, Daryl. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to a Thayer Kadir. Thayer Kadir, who asked the question? Charge it, champ, baby! I have a question for my coach for Tuesday's show regarding the Monday game versus Dallas, baby. First, will Slater one-on-one versus Parsons? Second, will Kellen Moore offense finally explode? Please let me know. Okay, love you, boy. FTR number 10 MVP, Super Herbie, baby. (laughs) All right. The question is for you there, Kyle. Slater versus Parsons one-on-one. Is that the idea? Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna you're gonna give any extra to Rashawn Slater. That's why you have him as your left tackle. So if they decide to put Parsons over there on the left side, you're got a one on one matchup. But why would you do that? If you're the defensive coordinator, why would you put your best player against their best player? You, unless you're trying to prove something, um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're going to see skin a lot of it. Yeah, you're going to see Parsons on Pipkins, and Pipkins will 100 percent get help on every play that Parsons is over there. Um, they also like to put Parsons down inside and try to get him going on from different positions. And um, so, yeah, if they put him on Slater, that's a, I think that's a dub for the chargers. Um, I know Parsons is really good. I'm not trying to diminish his ability, um, but I would take Rashawn Slater against any pass rusher in the league. And you're going to take your chances with him beating him 90% of the time. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. And then will Kellen Moore offense explode. <clears throat> Here's the deal. If who knows Kellen Moore better than Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is the head coach. He's going to have a say in everything that goes on on that defense. He's not calling the plays on, on Monday night, but he's going to have a say in what the preparation looks like. So I think they're going to do their best to take away explosive plays. Um, I think if we can be patient, take what they give us, and then take those chances when we can, um, I think that's what's going to be. They're going to, in my head, you know the guy, you fired him because he likes to score a lot of points. You're going to try to eliminate big plays as much as you can. So I think you're going to see us being efficient and trying to go score points. Um, but I think they're going to do everything they can to stop us from making those gigantic plays. What if this happens? First play, 75-yard touchdown! Yeah. Oh. Oh. That would be pretty explosive. Wow. You could do that. Though. Like You get an X on a screen. That's what that play was. That was Phil screaming about X scoring on a screen. So like yeah. that could happen for sure. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Uh, Athir Kadir, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to MJ. Who asked the question? I I know we're two weeks out, not overlooking Dallas by any means, but how many calls you think the Chiefs will be gifted against us over under four? I'm going to go under four, but they will all happen in the fourth quarter. 
Yeah, they do tend yeah. to wait until the fourth quarter to start. You got to wait and see how the Chiefs are doing. <laughs> That's not true. The last time we played them, um, remember those interceptions that they called incompletions? Right. That was early on in the game, and then we just shot ourselves in the foot by throwing a pick on the goal line. Yeah. But I think league wide with all of their bailouts, it's been it all tends to be quarter. the fourth quarter. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm taking under. I would hope for under four. Under four. <laughs> I'm hoping <Yeah>. under four. <laughs> so yeah. Thanks for reminding us, <laughs> Jay. We appreciate We're with it. Yeah. Yeah, but let's get through Dallas and then we'll then we'll worry about then that. all eyes are on the Chiefs prize. But Amen. thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Rebolt to 2006. Who asked the question? <clears throat> Dad gummit, it feels so good to not have died and gone to heaven and back multiple times on a Sunday. I always get pushback for saying 30 is the new 40, but I think in this case, the Chargers are aging us pretty bad. <laughs> With JC now back in New England, the Chargers have had a revolving door for quite some time in the cornerback room. Quentin Jammer and Casey Hayward have been your studs for us in the last two decades, but other than that, it's been busted draft picks, busted free agent signings, Derek Cox being the other one, and late round undrafted starters that show flashes but never consistency. You can say the same for the safety room as well. Scored on the Hitman, DJ, and Weddle, but success in the secondary is far and few between. What do you think is contributing to poor play in the secondary as a franchise? Count down the day until I see you guys in Kansas City. Hey, love you, bye. All right, well, it's an interesting question. You clearly did your homework there, bud. Uh, I wish it was a simple answer. <laughs> we could just say it's this, because then we'd it, you would know that the coaching staff had figured it out, and we would just get studs from this point out. But Besides Casey Hayward, we just don't have a great track record for free agent cornerbacks, mm -hmm. really. That's just what it is. It's either homegrown or early round picks like Quentin Jammer, or it's kind of what it is. I think we we're Zaunt. right. Zaunt. I, I think right now, personally with what just happened, I think if um, Vato stays healthy this year, I think they're going to get him a new contract. Yeah. Cause I think he, he, he's not playing at his best right now, but we know he can play really well. He, right. he can play at a high level. So yeah, um, I still feel good about our secondary this year. Yeah, and, and I don't think I don't think Mike Davis costs you a gajillion dollars. You know, I think you could keep him, and he knows knows the system, which has apparently been a really big deal. I don't know if you can project any contracts in the offseason, though, until we know what happens. Sure. With everyone being on the quote unquote hot seat, um, I think it could look very different. If the regime stays in place, I think that is potentially a, a decision you make because it's a it's a ready to go guy that's not going to cost you a ton of money. But sure, yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be a third contract for for Mike Davis, and you don't get many third. That's contract what I mean. Corners. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, yeah. Well, they put him on there. a short one. That sure. second one was not much. Now, yeah, yeah. You know, get him extended. Yeah, 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 yeah. I foresee an early round. We don't. We don't. I mean, was the last first first round DBs? It's Derwin, and before that, who you know, like we don't. We, that's not for really a long time. Is. It's not like the emphasis. So I feel like Verrett was guys one of those up. guys. Verrett, Verrett was like the oh, last yeah, he one. He was a first rounder. Definitely yeah. didn't pan out. Yeah. Yeah. That was not it. Yeah. It's a struggle for sure. And I mean, like I said, if everybody had crystal balls and knew who was going to be the best guys that would work for their system, then everybody would be winners. But just and, and health too. That's and health. One hundred percent. Because that's what JC was. He was health right off the bat. Right. Um, Verrett was health. Verrett was health right off the bat. Yeah. So just guys, you can't you can't project health. It just doesn't work like that. So right. Just got to get lucky. Just got to get lucky. There. Rebolt to two thousand six. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Boltzilla, who asked the question. Like, oh my God, boys, have you seen the whole Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey frenzy? That's like totally ridiculous. The NFL has their head so far up Taylor Swift's booty they can smell her chewing gum. Oh, I'm kind of worried about the refs and their crap calls against the Bolts in the upcoming game. I think we need to take swift action and get Justin da uh, dating a high-profile lady himself and balance the scales. I'm totally voting Lady Gaga because she has an IQ of like 166 and might be the most wholesomeness human being on this planet. My other choice is that Annie Agar lady who does the NFL parodies on social each week. She is totally hilarious. And who's it? Who would you like to see Justin dating? By the way, 
15 and 2. Woohoo! Can I be bye? All right. Well, interesting thought making Justin, forcing Justin to date somebody. I know. Perfect. Oh. I don't know if she's married. She could be, but that shouldn't stop him. Go for Besides it. the point. Besides the point. Zach Wilson's mom? Margo, Margo <laughs> Robbie. Margo Robbie. Barbie. Margo Robbie and Justin Herbert is Barbie a and power. Ken Ooh. all day. Ooh. That's like That's Malibu Ken. Malibu <laughs> yeah. Ken and Barbie. Let's go. That's quite the powerhouse. You just power. tri- that totally tri- yeah. topples the swift thing for sure. Yeah. Be, yeah. I guess that's big. fake. That's fully fake. <laughs> she wore a t shirt with Travis Kelsey on it like recently. Like, I love cool. The, uh, Have you seen them hold hands yet? They've it's fake. I saw one shot of them holding hands, but what I do love, <laughs> <laughs> I, love I think it's real, fake. Kyle. I think we just got to come to terms with it. It might have been a deep fake video. I don't know. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> I love seeing the... Uh, the I'll be Swifties. the Tin Hap guy for this whole podcast. That's fine. <laughs> I love seeing the Swifty fans that wear like Kelsey jerseys, but they're spelled wrong, like K-E-L-S-E-Y or something like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That cracks me up when I see that. They're all glittered out with rhinestones. Right. Like, come on. <laughs> but not Check right. Wikipedia, girlfriend. <laughs> it's um, just going to be the best when they break up, and it's the ultimate Chiefs suck. Travis Kelsey is the worst human in the world. That oh. song is going to be the game day hype song. Yeah. But what if that's like, what if that stops the Chiefs from like being good? Yeah. Like Kelsey's heart's broken. <laughs> so he's just, he's just kind of going mm. through the motions out on the field. He's like, all right, throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> His heart just isn't in it anymore. Hey, there's a lot of things that like it sucks that that's happening. Right. But there's a lot of bad, good stuff that can come from that. That could come from it. Yeah. yeah. Just think long term. Don't, don't yeah. get stuck in the short. Don't get stuck in the moment. But Margot Robbie for sure because she's. I think it's a good call, awesome. Margot Robbie. That'd be awesome. That's Barbie a good call. And, yeah, yeah. Barbie and Malibu King. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Boltzilla, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Traumatic, aka XX Kevon. It's our guy. It's our guy. It's our guy who asked the question. How do you feel about the rest of the season? How many games do we win? How many games do we have left? <laughs> good question. <laughs> Answer. Thirteen. Thirteen. You're Do like it. Kyle looking over the ceiling. Double oh, door. Double to me. <laughs> 13. So is I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> 15 and dose. Yes. Honestly, I, I mean, the cutting of JC Jackson really kind of boosts my confidence that, like, this team is going to rally on yeah. getting rid of that negative energy. Like, oh, wait. Have we gone back to see what JC Jackson did when Justin got hurt? No. Oh, like when, when he got on the late when he got hit? hit? Yeah, oh, remember that's... how the whole team like rallied around it? Was he that's just true. over there like eating sunflower seeds? Maybe. Ooh. That's going to make me even more mad. Let's go all 22. I'm sure there's an angle over there. There has to be. Son of a Somebody. He's just going to he's living rent free in my brain right now. I can't stand <laughs> that guy. <laughs> He tries to start running and his shoes he trips on his he trips on his laces. Dude. He trips on one of his shoelaces and just face plants. Chips a tooth. He's like, oh, uh, 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 I can't go in yeah. coach. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bill, you gotta get me out of here. <laughs> Bill, I want to oh. come home. <laughs> <laughs> Big Daddy Bill. Um, yeah, 15 and 2. Let's go, buddy. Woo-hoo. We got this. I miss I'm you, not man. Going to a game expecting uh, a loss ever, ever. No, no, it's a hundred percent. We we have this. The pieces are there. Yeah. Now that you got rid of JC Jackson, who knows what could happen? Stack them like Legos. Stack them. Let's build something majestic. Yes, like a, like a Super Bowl Before, trophy. We're going full Harry Potter, right? <laughs> Remember when Dumbledore had to drink all the poison so that Harry could get to the locket? Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> That's what just happened. Tommy T just drank all drink. that poison. Brandon Staley, and, Brandon Staley and him were taking turns just sipping like, Ugh. He's like forcing it. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's like, drink it. <laughs> drink it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what JC is. He's a fucking horcrux. That son of a bitch. <laughs> he is a horcrux. <laughs> yeah. That's gross. Wow. He's, like, <laughs> he's got a piece of Bill Belichick's soul because he's Voldemort. <laughs> It's all making sense. Oh my god! Oh god. It's, all all it's all coming together. 
Traumatic XX Kevon, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's Mission move it on now to Darius. So if I fresh ask the question. More of a long-term question, but at the end of the season, if we do hire a new head coach, what would y'all like to see out of it? Me personally, I would only want a head coach with experience and success at the position. The only head coach without it I would accept is more. Well, those coaches aren't available, unfortunately, because the ones that are successful are still being are coaching somewhere. Right? Yeah. Am I wrong? I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not ready to have this conversation. No, it's too soon. <laughs> All due respect. Thank you for coming on. Certified fresh. But who? what are we looking He's for? Not, we're not naming names. He's just asking for it. What you're it looking happened. for. Oh, what am what I looking, looking for? for? Uh, I would say it's an easy thing to say experience because the last two coaches that we had were first-time head coaches that, right. that if Brandon Staley doesn't, isn't the coach next year, that's because we missed the playoffs. And we underperformed. So I'm not, I don't think that's going to happen. But if that does happen, yeah, I would think that then you shift directions and go with the guy that has coached before to some capacity. Right. But were they, you know, is it like a Harbaugh from college? Would you want a more defensive minded coach? Harbaugh has been a head coach coach before. Um, I I don't care. If the guy's the right fit, hire the guy. Um, If it's a head, if it's an offensive guy, that'd be great. But who cares? Justin doesn't care. He has a new OC every year, and he does great anyways. Right. But these were the, this is the conversations we were having when we had Lynn was near the end of the season. I'm not ready to talk about this because I still think yeah. Brandon Staley could be the guy. I really yeah. do. So everyone is so negative on it. They're thinking like this. I'm just not there. I am not there with it. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. I, I'm trying to think of like other qualities because I mean like I want to say experience, but then like I look over at Sean Payton and like he is just that like, is a lot of experience. It's such that's a so whole organization. Experience. That organization is a dumpster fire. Russell Wilson is the issue there. Right. So, but I don't know. It's It still has to fall at the feet of, of a head coach for not like trying to pull it together, I think. So, I, I, I don't know. He's, yeah. 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 I, I, I'm I'm good with the one we got. Yeah. I'm, 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 <laughs> they broke the mold on Staley. <laughs> he's not. He's very polarizing. That's for damn sure. But he I'm, is this yeah. season for sure. Yeah. But it's. But the problem is there's so much momentum behind. Like, oh, we don't like Staley anymore. It's hard for a lot of people to back off it. So you're gonna hear that all the time. Right. When in reality, we just won two games. I don't care. How, you're mad at how it finished. <clears throat> the decisions he made at the end of the game won us the game. Yeah. So there it, you go. It is what it is. So there you go, Darius. Thank you for asking the question. Thanks, and man. we go out of Ask Bolt Fam with Boltville 714, who asked the question. I'd love to ask a question, Chicos, but my shoelaces are untied and my ego is just way too big for me to ask a question on a bye week. I'm sorry. Ah, is what I would say if I was a bitch. Oh, bye week or no bye week, it's bulking or do not bang. The only bye this week is the buy I'm waving with my middle fingers to that cocksucker, J.C. Jackson. <laughs> oh, all I have in this world is my balls and the Charger Chat podcast, and I don't break them on no one. <laughs> so here is my question. Ah, if either of the Duggan brothers refuse to go into a game with their dad, was coaching them, and they untied their laces, what would he say to them? Hey, Wooldog, what would you say to Kev if he asked him to go see the Exorcist movie and he refused to go because his shoelaces were on top? <laughs> How was the movie? Anyways, <laughs> f- the Raiders and the bitch-ass rest who continue to help the Chiefs. Can't love you, bye. Oh. I love this. All those scenarios, but like, if his shoelaces were on top. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Shoelaces. I'm sorry, Daddy. My shoelaces, they appear to be on top. <laughs> What do you want me to do? What do you want? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, if you... <laughs> I would love to see if you guys were just like, I'm sorry, Dad, I can't go in my shoelaces. Oh, I'm, one of my favorite quotes that my wife was around, <laughs> like, first time she met my dad, it was the, my, the funniest thing. We were outside playing at this dance competition, like, hanging out, and there were, the kids, there were, ki- there were kids playing in the lobby. I think Kyle was one of them. Yeah. And they were being loud, and my dad just... <laughs> Sticks his head out the door and says, do you know how fast you're going to shut up? So I think in this situation, do you know how fast you're going to lace up? I think that's what he would say. That's what he would say. Yeah. And he, he wasn't just, mean. It was just like, oh, shit, I'm getting in the game right now. Let's go. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like the expectation was such that there's no way that's a possible outcome in this universe. No. 
that would have never happened. No. Yeah. There's no way, shape, or form that someone doesn't have their shoelaces tied. And if you don't have your shoelaces tied, you still run your butt onto that field and play right. football. Yeah. There's a, who cares? I don't care. Go barefoot. Like right. you're just gonna go. You're not gonna. You're gonna go into the huddle, tie those thing bad boys up, and get ready to go. Or you're not getting right. oranges at halftime. No juice boxes. No juice boxes. No. You just pizza keep party after. No electrolytes. <laughs> you keep trying to think of consequences to an action that would never happen. It's just not. <laughs> this is. As much as you don't want to talk about a potential new coach, I can't even think about what would happen because it would never happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, Shit. I mean, I mean, speaking of something that would never happen, there's no way Kevin would ever say that he would not go to a horror movie. <laughs> That's ridiculous. In any universe. I mean, yeah. that just would never happen. And I oh, love- you have all four kids? Yeah. Okay, they're coming. It's yeah. like... We're, we'll make a way. Bring them on. Life finds yeah. a way. Yeah. But it there's was a will. There's a way. I yes. enjoyed it. People were shitting on the Exorcist, but I really like. Yeah, it. the the new Exorcist I think has a lot more going for it than not going for it. I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie by any stretch, but it's good. But I think it's worth seeing. Yeah, 100. percent So, uh, yes, <laughs> there's just no scenario. Uh-uh. Bolt Bill Seven One Four, where <laughs> the laces are not tied. <laughs> <laughs> we stay strapped. Yeah, always. Yes, yeah. the laces are always tied. I don't even have laces. I just wear slip-ons. <laughs> Wouldn't even scenario. be an option for you. Just There's can't even scenario. happen. Yeah, yeah. The, the shoe always fits. Um, <laughs> Ballville seven one four. Thank you for asking the question, and thank you everybody for asking questions and ask Bolt fam. We really do appreciate it, and uh, I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Uh, any final thoughts, there, gentlemen? Got to wait a whole week for football. I'm excited. Nervous, Plus a day. Right? Yeah. We have the whole other Sunday of no football. Yeah, we're going to have all day Sunday to watch football and just sit there waiting and waiting for Chargers to happen. But when it does, that's prime time, baby. Prime time Chargers. Prime Prime time Herbo. Uh, (laughs) We'll have all day Friday to get even more excited about it. But until then, folks, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chad. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. Okay. Love you, bye. When Guardian Leviosa. Swish and flick. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Good afternoon. Some call me Tim, and I am the owner of Tim's Enchantments, right beside the Cave of Cabanon, where we sell enchantments, shrubberies, sharp pointy teeth, coconuts, and many other items. If you are in search of a holy hand grenade, we got them in stock. Only three. And three is the stock that we shall have. Five is right out. If the knights who say, me, have sent you for a shrubbery, we have them. Ones that look nice and are not too expensive and of different heights and give the two-level effect. We even have had recent visit from Charger Great Justin Herbert for merely a flesh wound. But if you love foul, cruel, bad temper rodents with huge, sharp, pointy teeth, check out our runaway department where you too can pick up soiled armor. So grab your minstrel, coconuts, and gallop on down to Tim's Enchantments, where if you can't find what you're looking for, we don't have it.